I represent an RCO called IPC, which stands for Investing in People and Culture. IPC, which has now become a strong and vibrant community uh, organization, was formed by a group of dedicated volunteers a few years ago in response to the big society agenda, even though we didn't really know what that meant, and in recognition to the need for groups to work together at a grassroots level. To that end, the organization has now a working relationship with 25 refugee-led -led organizations in the Northeast in a loosely connected, informal consortium-type arrangement. Uh, IPC does typical RCO functions as well, like providing advice and information. But what makes our RCO special is our emphasis on collaborative work with other independent refugee groups. We deliver, we love to deliver joint venture projects. We have, for example, recently organized a joint awareness raising programs, uh, facilitated training uh, programs, delivered integration and employment re related projects, and so on. The organization is now becoming a consortium of RCOs who wish to work together. And the need to work together is being dictated more than ever because of the recent economic crisis and the subsequent budgetary cuts that dried up the resources. All charities have been affected, but RCOs, perpetually operating on the verge of bankruptcy, were hit the hardest. So what specific steps have we taken to tackle the funding problems. Firstly, as I mentioned earlier, we decided to link up with other refugee groups to provide effective and efficient services and also to avoid duplication of services, which is very important. There is no point for two identical refugee groups to deliver two identical projects in a small area to the same beneficiaries who came from the same country, who speak the same language, have the same culture and religion. There is a need for us to work together. I'm not saying these two RCOs should not exist concurrently. They should because they have different emphasis. But we need to learn to communicate which, with each other and attempt to work together. I believe this is vital for our existence in this climate. And secondly, we have come to realize that there are efficient ways of doing things or delivering projects other than applying by applying for grants, which is to work in partnership with mainstream organizations. Let me give you an example of what we have done recently. We identified there was a huge need for refugee families to receive education or awareness on child protection matters. We found out that most refugees in our region, in the Northeast, and I suspect it's the same uh, here as well, coming from different countries with different cultural and value systems, were not vastly familiar with the safeguarding children issues within the UK legal and, and social uh, framework. So we formed a partnership with NSPCC, uh, a national children organization, to train refugee families on a variety of issues relating to children's safety. The project started with a successful pilot scheme in Middlesbrough, and it spread over the whole of North East. This project was a typical partnership work that we uh, need to continue. It wasn't a case where the funder gives you some money and you receive a letter after a year saying, hi guys, how are you? What have you been doing? Uh, we gave you 20 grand last year. What have you done with the money? Uh, that was not the case. It was instead a partnership work where the funding organization, in this case, NSPCC and local authorities, were closely involved with the delivery of the project. 
Not a lot of money was exchanged, but a great deal of work was accomplished. We had similar equally successful projects done in partnership with the NHS, Newcastle Council, Middlesbrough Council, local universities, and so on. I'm mentioning these examples to highlight that there are plenty of mainstream and statutory organizations out there who'd like to work with refugee community groups like ours because we have, or we are in a unique position to reach our communities, which are branded as hard to reach. It's, it is not hard for us to reach our communities, is it? We have got the language, the experience, and the cultural expertise to link them with other organizations and to act as a bridge for the mainstream. That's why our existence and our survival is crucial. RCOs are the first point of contact for their members and as such play a vital role in their integration into the wider society. Finally, Donna is looking at me. <laughs> uh, my message to my fellow RCO leaders is this. Our size, and most RCOs are small by any measurement, and lack of expertise often work against us when we wish to bid for public sector contracts uh, or wish to enter into commissioning work. As a consequence, we are not in a position to benefit from the big society agenda and the localism bill, which I believe was dis designed uh, middle class people at heart who have got all the money, all the, the, the expertise, and all the time in their hands to do voluntary work without requiring any training and financial assistance. So, to benefit from the social, uh, the big society, I think we should skill ourselves up. Do you think? Yeah. We have to build our organizational structure, our organizational capacity in terms of putting policies and, and procedures in place, sorting out our accounting systems, which are mainly patchy based of times, and increase our size by working together. And secondly, we need to think creatively out of the box to raise funds uh, to survive. We have been traditionally so heavily dependent on grants, we stop thinking of other ways of raising money. It is now time to develop what is called a mixed economy of funding, which includes grants, subscriptions, contracts, sponsorships, but also income from trading goods and services. To do so, we may need to amend our constitutions, which sometimes dearly keep, and even change the legal structure of our organization for example, becoming incorporated or becoming community interest company. We have to do something. We owe this to our members who expect a lot from us and who are the most vulnerable section of the British society. God help us. Thank you.